Well, everyone, late night. Start a little later than normal, but I hope you all are doing well. It is, what day is it? Sem September 3rd, 2022. It's a Tuesday, I believe. Um, and I'm streaming here out of home base. I'm thinking we're going to try some... Um, doing some computer vision stuff like before uh, with chess boards. See how far we get. I haven't gotten very far so far, so uh, continuing on that trend potentially. But I uh, hope you're having a great night. We can just chat and hang out. It's gonna be probably a pretty short stream. Um, I was thinking of trying to make this as simple as possible and see if we can just like do the bare minimum when it comes to computer vision classification. So let's see what we got here. Um, obviously, um, I'm not prepared and I don't have anything loaded up. So that's just how I do things. But we're going to go ahead and do this, switch to this. Hopefully you can see that terminal prompt. If you're in chat, let me know. Let me load up my um, channel just to make sure I can see if there's anyone there watching. And there is not. So it's just us. By us, I mean me. There we go. All right, let's make this a little bit bigger. And let's show you what we have here. I have a chessboard on this camera. And I thought it would be interesting to see if we could do the bare minimum and maybe work through what the labeling's gonna look like on this labeling system and potentially what the um, scoring metric could be for how well we would say our computer vision classification is. Now, one thing I will mention, the camera is really wobbly. It's attached to my desk and I have shaky knee syndrome, um, it, also known as ADD. So it might, it might be shaking a little bit. I apologize for that. Hey, David Jackson, welcome to the chat. You're the first one here. I'm so glad you're here. Um, not much is going on. We're gonna see if we can uh, make, some, make a data set and talk through maybe how we're going to uh, label this. Um, so we need to take things step by step. This is my pizza pizza pizzas, which I've typed up every time a new subscriber comes in. I spin a wheel and one of the things I have to do sometimes is uh, type pizza a hundred times. So that's why you saw pizza there. Uh, but we're going to think through two things. Number one is how do we, um, how do we set up the output? or the labels, classes. All right, so basically, if we're gonna make a computer vision system that's capable of identifying the position of the board, we're gonna make some concessions. We're gonna, we're gonna start out simple here, and we're gonna assume maybe that the A1 corner is always gonna be here in the bottom left. Bottom right, sorry, from that viewpoint. From where I'm sitting, it looks like the left, but from your angle, it's the bottom right. And then we, so that means that white is always gonna be starting on this side. And we don't have to worry about potentially the camera being like from behind white's position or from the other side of the board. We're just gonna make things simple. By the way, David J, let me know how you're doing tonight too. I'm interested to know. What do you? What have you been working on? You're my one chat companion. So how do we set up these labels? Um, I guess it's gonna have to be like a 64. I mean, we could do we could do an eight by eight tensor. But I guess it doesn't really matter. We'll just flatten it to 64 tensor. And we'll start with A1. 
And then we'll move our way. So we'll start, we'll go like in this order, B1, C1, etc. So that's going to be starting here in this corner. So when we write our um, ground truth labels, we'll have, hold on, let me have, change these settings. I'm looking at big foot, foot sighting data. That sounds amazing. Can you send me a link? I'd be interested in taking a look at that. Big foot sighting data. That sounds like a lot of fun. All right, so back to this. A1 here will be where the first thing we'll label. We'll go all the way through to A2, A, B2 etc and then we'll get to the final row which will be will end on f8 g8 h8 right so for each of these values in our tensor hey what's up lemon skate i hope you're doing well tonight we're just uh, trying to figure out how to set up this labeling scheme in our computer vision system. So then we're also going to need some classes, right? Now, I do want to just leverage the fact that we already have a data set that's sort of done this, um, where they've labeled. Hey, we got Gustavo in the house. Welcome. How's it going? Um, so there's this chess data set that someone has created already. And we should maybe use the same labeling technique that they use. So we did train a model using YOLO v5 PyTorch, I think. Um, I think we have this data on my computer. So let's go into our chessboard vision repo. Actually, I think it was in YOLO v5. Data. Maybe it wasn't that. Maybe it was in um, chessboard vision. I think I see it there. This chess image data set. So let's open this. Is this the same data set? Let's read the README. Actually, this is the one that uses Blender. Chess image data set. Now I'm gonna get distracted and start looking this one up. This uses like a 3D rendering software to actually get the example images of this, of a chessboard. What's this chess man data set? Oh, we've seen this before. This is just like a bunch of pictures of different uh, chess pieces for, oh, we could use that for something maybe later. Here you go. What are you, what are you pointing me to, David J? Oh, this is your Tidy Tuesday. Um, where's the Bigfoot sighting data? Get the data. TT load. Oh, so this is like a tidy Tuesday. They just kind of link it through their module so you can't download it directly or you could just direct download it directly like this. Bigfoot.csv. I should put this on Kaggle if it's not already on there because that's kind of cool. Here's the CSV. Let's view the raw data. Whoa, that's a lot of text for, for finding Bigfoot. Are these like full articles? Um, yeah, that's a cool data set. I'm gonna check that out later. Data set of rendered chess game set images. This is cool. So this is another idea that I've probably gonna get sidetracked on. 
Um, oh, look, there's a paper that came out about this. Determining chess game state from an image. Let's see how these people did it. Maybe copy their setup. The problem of recovering the configuration of a chess pieces from an image of physical chessboard is often referred to as chess recognition application span from chess robots, move recording software, a digitizing chess positions images. Particularly compelling application arises in amateur chess where the casual over the board game may reach interesting position that players may afterwards want to analyze on a computer. That's kind of the position we're in. We're trying to take this board and have something that will detect the position. To this end, we put forth a new synthesized data set comprising of rendered chessboard images with different chess positions, camera angles, lighting setups. Furthermore, we present chess recognition system consisting of three main steps, board localization, occupancy, occupancy classification. So that's which, uh, piece is occupying each position in the board and piece classification. So that makes sense. The two latter steps, we employ two convolutional neural networks to make the traditional computer vision techniques for the board. Um, let's see what their accuracy are. Do they say it here? However, chess sets vary in appearance by exploiting the geometric nature of the chessboard. The board localization algorithm is robust enough to reliably recognize the corner points of different chess sets without modification. Using this algorithm in conjunction with careful data augmentation, we can extract sufficient samples. Oh, let's see if we can get this paper to work. Look, they have even, they have their own the uh, repo for it. Three methods of installing running chess SOG using poetry. I don't have poetry. Uh, using pip and using Docker. Let's also see in this paper what accuracy they're measuring this by. So this is kind of getting at the root of our problem. Um, yet the approach they're talking, this is talking about um, previous work and they're saying, let's just skip to the end. The approach that the last people they mentioned was captured in depth camera who who represents chessboard recognition system using basic neural network that is not convolutional. Oh, that's interesting. You like Pete Pip hater? I do as well. Uh, so this achieves an accuracy of 72%. Let's see what, do they say what their accuracy is? I'm surprised that there's a lot of wooden chessboards. All right, original end image, detect edges. We've done this before. We've done this before. Um, then this looks like it's from the top down. No, this is using augmentation. This is using augmentation to identify these center points and then to augment the data to make it look more like um, a top down board, which is interesting because uh, then it kind of modifies it for the fact that there might be um, different angles that your camera's looking at. Right? Hey, Herbie Hoover, welcome to the chat. How are you doing? How is everyone? Hey, by the way, big announcement coming later this week. Later this week, check out for my channel. I'm going to be releasing a, um, something new. We're going to, we're going to have a something exciting announced here. So make sure you stick around. They trained a total of six CNNs with 12 output units in the final layer for piece classification. Okay, so 12 output units in the final layer. Oh, 
Oh, that's in piece classification. So they are doing this in steps. It's not an end to end approach. The first one is identifying the board. Then they kind of isolate to the board. They do board localization, piece classification. And let's see what their, wow, their validation accuracy is 99% on the piece classification. And let's look at their confusion matrix. This is a great well-written uh, paper. Good evening, Data Basics. How's it going? Herbie Hoover, doing well. How to recruit or reach out to me for data science role. Nice, I love it. Is it a position you're excited about? I hope so. So what's the confusion usually? Uh, I guess this blank means that it thinks it's blank. So a lot of times it thinks upon, uh, so the most confused is between a black pawn and thinking it's blank. Um, could it be because of the background? We were having that issue too. Inference benchmarks. Um, so it takes about 0.3 seconds 0.35 seconds for a GPU classification and two seconds for CPU. Nice, and they have a GitHub repo. So should I see what the requirements are on this? So uh, I wanna also see their model, like their output, because that's kind of what we were trying to get at. Utils, config, chess sog. So corner detection, occupancy classifier. Um, They're using PyTorch. So this is a convolutional neural network. And their last output layer is 256 to the number of classes. Okay, so this is just, what's the number of classes gonna be? Num classes. Num classes is two? Oh, so this is just identifying if it's occupied at all. Let's read about the occupancy classification to make sure I understand this. We find that performing a police identification directly after detecting the four corner points with no intermediate step yields a large number of false positives, i.e. empty squares being classified as containing chess pieces. See figure five. Yeah, that's what we were seeing in the, oh wait, this is figure five looks like this. Oh, so it identifies this square and thinks that there's a piece in it. Interesting. Um, large horizontal gradient intensifies give rise to vertical lines. Oh, wait, well, okay. To solve this problem, we first train a binary classifier to identify. So that's why it's zero and two. Um, but this runs on each of the squares independently, it looks like. Let's see what their evaluation function looks like. Hey, Herberta, welcome. What's up? We're trying to do chess classification, chess board classification. And I'm reading up on this paper that looks really nice. Um, so this module that brings together the whole recognition pipeline into a single class so it can be conveniently executed. Awesome. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and install this. Let's go ahead and install this. So let's conda activate 
conda emv list. It's kind of awesome, but also kind of annoying that the problem I wanted to work on is already solved. Um, but it can be improved. Conda activate chess viz. Um, we can at least see how well it does. Hey, we got a chess ch chessiest W guy following. Thank you for following. So we are going to go into this repos directory. Actually, we already um, activated that. So let's end this and Jupiter lab this. And also in our chess viz repo, uh, conda environment, we are going to do some pip installing. Hopefully it won't mess up other things that we've installed, but we'll, we'll see. So we have to clone this. Chess aug. CD chess, CD chess aug. Chess cog, chess cog. Uh, hello, we're doing chessboard recognition stuff. Yes, Chessy TTW, we are, we're trying to. You can see here, I got this camera set up on the board and we're gonna see how well this, uh, this pipeline that someone else has created as their master's thesis performs. So let's go into chess aug and we're gonna pip install this. Pip install this. We're in our chess viz library or a con environment. And then we're going to see how well it runs just on this. Uh, Chessy is TTW. How did you find the channel? I'm in, interested to know. Is this supposed to rest, recognize the piece also or just the board? Oh, the, the piece, the pieces. I just don't have pieces on it yet. So I, I was going to break some of the, those out here while this is installing. It's probably a good time to do this. Let's just let Lady Luck decide what comes out. Oh, it's a black pawn. So we'll we'll see how well it does with that. Actually, it was saying that the identifying a black pawn gets mistaken uh, for an empty square at most. Twitch algorithm probably, I want chess and computer stuff. Oh, you're in the right spot. Yeah, you're definitely in the right spot. Um, so I just installed that. Let's clear this workspace. This is my YouTube stats, not what I want right now. Let's start a new notebook called Chess Aug. Um, testing out the chess cog, cog, right? Chess cog library. Let's put the reference in here. To chess cog. And then let's follow their directions. Oh, we can download the data set and models. Okay, so we need a first we need a download data set. Okay, so there's there's like a um, download data set function to run. We kind of just want the models. Yeah, this is four gigs, so we're not gonna download that. Let's just try to download the models to start. I'll download the, the data set later. Um, are you trying going to train it on a specific piece that you have? Yeah, so we've done that before. We've done that. We trained a YOLO model on the these types of pieces, 
and we had pretty good success with it. Um, not perfect, but pretty good. So it downloaded it to a temp directory and then it put it in media chess uh, models. Okay, so it put it in the models directory. So now if I look here, there is a models directory and this is the occupancy classifier. It looks like it's a that's the ResNet um, based classifier. Why does it have a train and val folder? Oh, that's just like the training logs uh, for TensorFlow. TensorFlow, um, TensorBoard, sorry. Then they use Inception V3 as the, what's that, the piece classifier. All right, so just a quick overview of some machine learning models. If you look up Tim library, not Tim, like a person named Tim, but the model PyTorch library, Tim, it's like the ultimate library for computer vision pre-trained models. Hey, Clipped. Hey, I recently started watching your videos. Thanks for the help on data analysis and cleaning. That's from Nagasai from YouTube. Thank you for watching them. I appreciate it. So um, just so everyone's on the same page, Pi, uh, Tim, I'm showing you this because Ross Whitman is a great guy who maintains this um, this library that allows you to easily pull in a lot of pre-trained mod models. Why do I, why am I bringing us here? Why am I bringing this up? Because I want to show you some of the main models that are used these days. Uh, create model. Does he have them listed? I thought he had them listed somewhere. Overview, list models and pre-trained weights. Yeah, so there's a lot more than just these, but this is just lins like listing the dense net models he has. Actually, let me see if, I, I think I've in Tim installed here. Import Tim. All right, so it looks like we can do list models. And this will list all the dense net models, but let's just do star in here. Will this be crazy? All models. Look at all these models we have to choose from. So some big ones that I've used in past competitions. So these TF versions are just like the TensorFlow versions of the same models, but let's just pretend that those don't exist. Um, there's like TensorFlow, efficient net, but efficient nets, big ones to go through. At least like a year ago, a year and a half ago, for all image classification stuff, like this was the go-to efficient net. Always use though, they train quickly, they're pretty reliable. Now a little bit older, I think, are the ResNet. So um, I, obviously it depends on what you're trying to train a model for, but ResNets are pretty handy. You got a bunch of that. And uh, then there are like these fancier ResNet, like SE ResNet, there's um, uh, ResNext, where are those? ResNext that are popular. And then these different, like the reason why you see a bunch of different ones is because they have different architect, like the same underlying architecture or idea of these models are the same. But like for efficient net, at least, these are the size of the model. And you might think to yourself, oh, well, I want the most accurate model possible. So I just need to get the biggest one, like a B8. Um, the problem with that is number one, take forever to train. Number two, if your data set's not large enough or your the image size is not big enough, it really doesn't give you that much of a improvement if anything it might overfit too much and uh, number three is for inference time if you're using a large model you're, it's gonna be super slow so 
Uh, that's why you don't necessarily jump to these larger models. All this is to say, it looks like the backbone that they're using. So backbones like you usually take these models and then you like slap on whatever um, output you want to be at the end of this model. And that'll kind of let you predict whatever, like if you're doing a binary classification, it might just be a, a one class. And if you're using like default image net, what 1024, however many there are in there. Hey there, big fan. So working a little bit out and want it. What are you saying, Rohan? Hey there, big fan, still working. So I'll be in and out. Wanted to thank you for all your great work. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, just Autumn said the CNN's the current state of art is Covnet. Okay, so Covnet's the best now. Covnet Tiny is probably a good choice for basic applications. Good to know. Good to know. So we can see. Like granted, all, all I've learned about why are Covnets not in here? Most of what I've learned about image models is from Kaggle competitions. And typically in a Kaggle competition, whatever the best model is, is going to be used because the people know how to win. <laughs> right? Um, need the latest version of Tim likely. Okay. So I just need to upgrade my Tim. I have 0 0.3.4. What's the latest version? Yeah, so I haven't done an image competition in about a year. So if Covnet's better, I'll give that a try. But um, there are also like specific models for classific for like segmentation that don't necessarily fall into the same category. And then you have these like uh, VIT type of they're like transformer type of models that are supposed to be good. Haven't used them too much in exception. I've heard of used a good bit. Um, yeah, so these are all the like models that are out there, but that's not the ones that they're using. So let's go ahead and use their documentation. Oop, why does this look so huge? All right, so this says chess.org recognition dot recognition path to image. Um, hey, hey, did we welcome to the family? I'm so glad you're here with us tonight. Um, and this is how their output looks like. That's cool. So it outputs it like a chessboard. Let's do. Let's see if I, I don't want to run it from the command line like this is a module. I want to run it in my notebook. So the way I would do that is um, from chess og, chess cog, keep on wanting to call it chess og, dot, let's just see if I can import, oh, I'm not in the right environment. Gotta go to chess, chessboard vision. Uh, I can just, should I create a new environment? No, I just need to make chess viz accessible in my, in my Jupyter lab. So make con environment found in Jupyter. I go to this site so many times just to run this one command line. So, um, pip install IPy kernel, what is it? IPy kernel. Python dash M, IPy kernel, install user name, and this is gonna call be called chess viz. Now that now this should be available in my Jupyter environment as something I can choose. Let's see what we got here. Uh, chess viz. Mm. 
Let's go. Let's go, people. Let's go. Hey, Wolf goes nigh. Welcome. All right, let's delete this stuff. Let's import. Let's see if this works. I progress not found. Um, maybe I should pip install. Yeah, thanks for joining the family. Wolf goes Naya. Let me know how you found the channel in chat. That would be great. Requirement already satisfied. So, do I need to install I progress? That's installed now. Okay. User install upgrade my widgets. So maybe I need to install iPy widgets. Let's go back. Import this chess cog. All right, so then we're gonna do um, let's see what recognition has. Let's see in recognition. Recognition. If we run this as a module, it would run this main, which would parse out these arguments, read in the image, convert it from BGR to RGB. Okay, that's okay. Then it makes this chess recognizer. So that's kind of what we want. That's what that's what we want to pull out of here is the chess recognizer. And let's see where the chess recognizer. It's the, it's a class that's defined in this uh, file. So let's do uh, from chess cog recognition import. What was it called? Chess recognizer. Okay, so now we have a chess recognizer object that we can use the same way. Let's go ahead and take this camera and close it here so that I can uh, also import CV2. CV2 uh, video capture. And then I need to figure out what device this is. I'm pretty sure it's device seven and let's read this that should just read the current image from that camera and we can check that out by also importing matplotlib pi plot as plt we can do plt i am show this image <laughs> there it is it's the wrong camera that's my Secondary, that's my like old school camera. So let's uh, do cap release this just so it's released. Now the light on that has turned off and see if it's five. There we go. And you might be saying, why is this image look weird? That's because it's in BGR instead of RGB. And by flipping around RGB, the, the third channel, we can make it bigger. So. Um, let's make this fig size bigger. Okay. There we go. Any questions, anyone? No questions. Okay, so now we have a we have a piece here on in the middle of the board and we're going to see how well this image recognizer works. Alakai, thank you for joining the family. You're part of the family. I appreciate it. If you're watching over on YouTube, you can come over on Twitch. If you're on Twitch, just stay here. That's the main chat, but um, really you can watch from wherever you want. And hopefully I won't get a copyright strike like I do every time that I stream to YouTube because I swear I'm using a 
what says it is a non-copyright music soundtrack in the background. I'm trying a different one today, but um, it always still gets flagged. Okay, so we have our image. We've converted the color, or we can convert the color like this too. Basically, let's just copy everything from here and see what they're doing. Um, so we don't want to read the image because we already have it. Convert it to the correct coloring. Create our chess recognizer. Now we need our classifiers folder. Hey, Grum Pnarsaros, welcome to the family. You're part of the family now. And also you, Wiggist Beeb. How did you guys find the channel? Let me know in chat. We're creating a chessboard um, live detector. So let's go up this. Um, so I don't know what the recognizer sends back and I don't know what the classifier folder should be. I think it's gonna be repos. I don't know if it takes a string directory. Um, but let's try this, chess cog, models, maybe just the base directory will work. Unsupplied it operand for, for string and string. Okay, so let's see, it's probably gonna take like a, a path object. Classifiers folder is, yeah, the path. It's URI. From recap, import URI. What's recap? What? URI. Is that because it's trying to get a URL? Okay, so args.color. Let's see what this prediction method takes. So it takes in the image. So we've, we've created our recognizer. It's working correctly now, right, we think. Um, this takes in the RGB image, which we should have now. Actually, I ran this twice, so the image probably is not the right color. It's converted back. Just That's a, a consequence of me converting it twice. So let's actually read the current state of the board. Then it's gonna be converted into RGB. We have our models folder and we're trying to predict. Now I didn't give it anything for the uh, turn. Okay, so that's the current player. R returns the board. Look at that. Hi Medallion, stuff is looking very interesting. Question, did you create a new Jupiter kernel with called Chess Viz to have it dedicated to Chess Aug? But how did chess aug in computer, it's not in PyPy. Oh, so I just followed the directions. You can pip install, you can pip install a Python library without out it being in PyPy. So you, the way you do it is you clone the directory. And I do this for my own packages from time to time. time, to time. But you clone this. I don't know why they have a space here. This should not have a space. And then you CD into the directory and now they have a setup.py in here. Or it looks like not. They have this poetry, uh, which is like the cooler way of managing the packages. But they have it set up in here that you can just do pip install uh, period when you're in this directory and it'll install that package. Um, so let's, uh, let's do two things at once. Let's plot this image. Can we crop it a little bit from like 100 to 600? And then from this, from like 100 to about 600. Now we're a little bit more cropped in on the board. It's still got that angle going on. But let's um 
Wow, I didn't know that this package already existed. This is pretty awesome. So now that we have this, let's try making a little bit more complicated of um, of a board setup. What is anyone in chat? It's not correct. Look at the look at the color where the pawn is. You're right. So is this assuming A1 is always the bottom left corner? Okay. Uh, good, good observation, Grump. I'm so glad you're part of our family. All right, let's test this out by, um, I know you can't see this camera, but I'm going to move it to the A1 square. We are going to rerun this. Uh, clearly it didn't read in the latest image. Hey, hi, M. Kyle. Welcome to the family. I hope you're doing well. How's it going? I, um, I moved this. Why isn't this showing it? And this cap dot read should read from this device. So let's release this device just to be sure. Cap dot release. And do this. And see where it is. Okay, so it's an A1 now. Now it's actually an A1. Let's see what the board says. The board doesn't know. Okay, so this is fair. This is fair. The board doesn't know where the correct position is. It doesn't know the position of the board. Granted, like there are light and dark squares, but it's just assuming that the bottom right is is a light square. Let's try to see, or you can just rotate the image. Yeah, I can, or I can just physically rotate this board. And, and drop everything on the ground. I wish you could see this camera live, uh, but then I won't be able to create the capture device and stuff. Um, so we're going to cap that release. Not sure why I have to release each time. It should, it should be fine. So now the bottom right square is, cor oh, it, th it thinks it's a knight. I didn't even realize that. Um, so not perfect. That's good. That means that we can improve upon it. I'm surprised it thinks it's a night though. Yeah, we want our solution to work really well on, um, let's also crop this a little bit more. Actually, no, we're good for now. Um, we want our solution to work pretty well. Wasn't it showing a pawn earlier? Yeah, I guess it doesn't like the fact that this pawn is down here. Let's like maybe put it up here on I've just moved it to H4 and let's see how the the classifier looks like. So now it still thinks it's a pawn. It could be do something with it. Something with like the angles. Yeah, exactly. Hi, MQ. It's like the angle of of the position. All right. So let's make it a little bit crazier. Does anyone have a favorite like chess game they want me to set up? I actually want A1 to be, maybe rotate this. Uh, pawn on H1 is illegal position. Does it consider that? Pawn on H1 is a black pawn on H1. Now that's a legal position. Fisher game six. Yeah, we can do that. Um, wait, a pawn in H1 is legal for a black pawn. It would just be promoted to a different piece. So, oh yeah. So I guess then technically um, it wouldn't be. Okay, so let's do look up um, Fisher versus Spass 
game six. I think I have this printed out, like a, a visualization of this printed out as some artwork somewhere else in my house. Um, let's find the key moments. I don't know what the key is moments. The key move of the game is the move 20 E4. E4. So I'm going to set this up. I'm going to set this up. Bear with me. Uh, pawns can't be on rank one or eight. True. I was forgetting the fact that if they get to the eighth or first rank, then they're promoted. Um, fair though. Fair, fair point. Let's also, let's delete this. Move this down here. Uh, let's do some, let's do some cleaning up. So let's do, let's create a get image. So this should return our image and the board. And I don't want to do this. And then we'll also do the releasing of this capture device down below here. So it's like cap release here, remove it from here. Uh, so what are we doing? Take our capture device. Let's just make this a variable cap device is five. Yeah, cap device, because otherwise might get confused with like GPU device. Hey, why not release first? If we don't have the object, um, then we can't release it. Hey, Anna Yamani, welcome to the family. I'm so happy to have you here. We are streaming about uh, chess board image recognition. Um, I'm also going to make a function called plot image and we're going to take in the image i do this a lot like it's kind of annoying just make the same function i think this is axis off and then this should just help us to uh run it easily so now we should get our image in our board if we run this get image class uh, this should not take in an image. It's just taken in a capture device. Um, this is not going to work because we need to release this first. Um, and now we have our image in our board. And let's try our plot image on this image. There we go. It's kind of big. Maybe too big. That's what she said. Um, then we're going to go, so make this a little bit smaller. There we go. Well, it's like when I make the font smaller, it actually makes it small, bigger. Okay, so <laughs> there we go. Uh, you should only do the image capture once, not inside get image. Think of a lazy global variable in initiation once we should be able to forget about the release so you're saying that the first of cell of line 46 well it's not cell 46 anymore now it's 52 uh, but wolf goes nice is saying you should only do image capture once You're saying, okay, so you're saying to create this capture device and then only pull in the image once, like do all this once, the cap.read, or feed in this capture device in once. Because we, we could do this. The reason why I'm doing it this way is because I want to, every time I run, run this, I want it to pull the current image from my webcam. Like I could make this like this, remove the release. Uh, 
uh, this cap device is going to be five. I guess it wouldn't need this capture device anymore. All right, I'll humor you. So then I need to release it here. Uh, get image class. Oh, that that's not supposed to be in here. That needs to take this. And of course we need it. We're in this infinite releasing state, but there we, there we have a, we have the position, we have the plot and we have the board, which has E4. Uh, that's H4. Okay, so let's let's make sh let's get this set up the same way that it has it here. Oh, I'm gonna cram myself crazy. It's like this. In real life, IRL. Now it's in the top right, which is E4, E4, light square E4. Uh, sorry, E8. I'm going crazy. It should be like this. Can I even think? So A1 should be in the bottom left. Which it is. Why is this not right then? Because this is an old picture. Th that's why. We have something strange going on here. What I'm looking at here is different. Okay, what I'm looking at here now is what I think it should be. There we go. <laughs> now we have the right device. Uh, this image is too big to actually see though. Let's make this smaller. Stack, not empty tensor list. There we go. Okay, so we have some cropping issues. That's because I've been finagling this board around. I moved it uh, too far in one direction because I really like the band one direction. So let's go ahead and do this. T took out the crop completely. Um, it needs to move a little bit this way. Fair enough. Run this again. There we go. And let's see what it says this position is. It says it's H4. Great. So zero, don't call this again. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Wolf goes nice. So you're saying that I should create this, this first, and then in theory, I should be able to run this multiple times every time it will capture the new image, right? It was being strange though and not actually working. I'm gonna move the pawn to so you can't tell because it hasn't moved. I'm going to move the pawn to E4 and sm smack dab in the middle of the board. Let's see if the image actually updates. It does not. See? Usually it works fine. It could be because of like, maybe I just need to restart this notebook. Yeah, that's, that's why I was doing it this way. Um, But maybe now that I restart the notebook, it's gonna be better. We'll, we'll get this together. All right, so now you can see it's on E4. Printing the board state, it's on E4. Try again. E4. Oh wait, I haven't moved anything, so we can't tell. I'm gonna put the pawn on C2. So we get this cap video IO issue. 
Could it also be because I have, I think I closed my, yeah, so I'm just gonna go ahead and release this each time because I know that then it works. Now it's gonna work. Now I'm gonna move it over here. It shows it in the new position and it shows the piece has moved to F4. Great. Now let's set up a full position. We've only messed around with the black pawns now. We are going to set up this position and see how it goes. So I'm gonna find some pieces. You guys just chill out here for a second. Uh, no, wait, let's, let's get up this other camera, see if it'll actually work. I need to release it. I need to release. Release the stress. Uh, not that. Uh, cap that release. Just so you know, if you if you haven't worked with this board object before, we've done this a lot on stream. But this is like uh, the type of object this is is from the chess library. It's really handy because if you actually print it it'll print like this, like it shows where the pawn's position is. I think we can get the FEN. I don't know why it's doing that weird thing, but you can do a lot of stuff to this, like um, uh, validate that it's a um, correct position. Speaking of which, let's, let's check to see if I can get this pawn onto um, G1 and see if it works or if it, says that there's a pawn on g1 or if it's going to fail because it knows that's an invalid position no so it was i think it was just a classification issue um but we can also like just like see where how many bishops are on the board i mean there's can claim draw board fen this is what we used a lot before so this is like the fen uh, notation of a chessboard. If you don't know about that, just look up Wikipedia FEN. Uh, we wrote a little function to convert between the two. Um, and I am going to, I, now that I've released that, let's see if I can actually open up my cheeser. Nope. And show you guys me setting up this position. So let's get this over here. Get here, so it's not too boring. Maybe you could show the info one plot. Yeah, the thing is that this, what it's showing here, the second board is, it's not an image. And we worked on this before. It's actually like an HTML rendering or a SVG rendering of the board state. So, um, So if we go to like the Python chess library, let's see if there's, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna get sidetracked on that too much, but I, I totally get you, Ala. I, I've tried that before. And I think one of the solutions was just to save it as like a PNG file on on disk and then read it back in. Anyways, let's see how well it does with a legit position. What? Let's vote in chat. Let's have a vote. By the way, I've been ignoring the YouTube chat. So if people are, no, no one's talking in that. Uh, let's do a poll. How many pieces will it get correct all uh 50% greater than equal to 50% less than 50% or none i'm going to make a 5 minute poll while i start this up please vote in the poll let me know what you think it's gonna happen as we see, as we do this. So just to show what, what's going on here, we have the poll. We also have 
the position that I'm hoping to set up here going on from the famous game. And then we're gonna use the detection algorithm to see how well it can pick it up. Can you guys see all this stuff? Does immunization impacts on classification? Immunation, what did, what, sorry, what does that mean? Um, so I probably should have had all the pieces out first. I'm gonna need some pawns, I'm gonna need a white king. Get them all on my lap. Probably drop them somewhere. Um, all right, let's get some pawns. H2. Oh yeah, so this is like, this is gonna be the white position. H2, H2. Uh, tell me if I'm messing this up, by the way. Let's make this smaller. Scold me. I've, I should have given myself less than, or more than five minutes to do this. So I'm super slow. Uh, put this like here-ish. Nothing's working. There we go. All right, we got this. Nope. <laughs> we got this on H6. Let's just go with all the pawn, white pawns first. White pawn here, we got a queen. We have a white pawn here moved to e4. White squared bishop. We got two rooks out. Now for the black pieces, let's work our way from the top to the bottom. We obviously need to have a black king. Now it's gonna be interesting with this one because this black king is kind of like hanging over the edge. You could see the background of my flooring. I'm sure that's gonna screw some stuff up. Let's have it here. Let's put a rook here. And a knight here on, on D7. Please tell me if I'm screwing things up. Hi, what are we doing today? Hey, welcome. How's it going, Wim? We are using an um, algorithm that detects the position of a chessboard using images. We're using a, we're, the goal is to create one that we can um, that we can design ourselves. But we're kind of using this paper that was released that um, they released their code that does this. We're seeing how well it does. It may be. Maybe it's so good we should just give up on this project and do a different one. But you know, I think it's maybe a good, like, Kaggle competition sort of idea. Um, do we have the position correct? I know you can't see all the way on the left side of the board. The votes are coming in. People think that greater than 50% um, is going to win some someone thinks less than 50% will be classified correctly and someone says all oh, I actually my opinion is I think that the um, oh white king yeah wait we need a white king hey speaking of monarchies no I'm not gonna go there it is very relevant right now So we have the position set up here. We have what we know to be the true board position that I'm trying to get that's kind of out of frame here. I'm realizing that you guys probably can't see this. And then we have our voting. I'm actually gonna vote for less than 50% just to like, just to be crazy here. Let's see how well it does. So we have the position set up. Our poll's about to end. Please get your vote in now. It's your last chance before the doors close. Greater than 50%, but not all. I guess greater than 50%. I didn't, I wasn't explicit about it not also including all, but um, this is not, not inclusive of all. So let's see how well this does. 
I need to close down this webcam version so that we actually pull in our capture device. And this is the position. Now I'm not doing any crops to this. We can try it with cropping out the, the backgrounds. We can also, I can maybe put something on the ground to make it uh, eat better to distinguish between these. Uh, but let's do, let's see what the board looks like. Who's the winner? Whoa, okay, so all is not correct. All is definitely not correct. Um, what are we, what are we missing here, folks? We got some, we got some misclassification with the king and the queen. The black king may be hard. Yeah, the white pieces are, it's just totally missing this pawn. Why is it missing? Oh, is it because it's, um. It's blocked. I think we can see enough of this pawn that it should be able to pick it up. But that's just me. Illumination probably. I got a lamp. I can put a lamp on it. They like the horse's most powerful piece. Yeah, it's like, hey, let's just assume everything is a horse. So it thinks this rook, this rook is a knight. It's kind of far out there. Uh, to give it the benefit of the doubt. Um, so the question is, how do we score this? How do we score how well this did? So I, I think I can pull in the FEN position from... This, will it let me just download this? Any of you chess.commers know this? Right, no, no, not right click. Hey, welcome to the fa family, the architect. You are part of our family now, and I love it, and I love you, and thanks for joining us. We're doing some chess board vision detection and all that stuff. So here is the FEN position. Let's copy this. And Hey, we got Broom Spoon. Welcome to the family. You are my buddy. Import chess and then we're going to take a chess board object and we're going to feed it this FEN. I think this should work. So this is the correct position. This is the predicted predict, uh, prediction, yes. How do we score? How do we score? How did it get this, the queen and the king mixed up? Maybe you should consider in some way the presence of n n or not of a piece in the position and the correctness of the piece detection. Yeah, some sort of like um, awareness of, well, probably what would be best is some sort of awareness of previous moves. And then like, if this is, if we're playing a game, then it should detect each move based on the change. Now I've watched a lot of these videos, especially like just on my own for fun, but I'll also watch a lot of these videos that we were trying to extract out the, the positions for, which actually we should maybe try to do that. Um, and notice that there are a lot of issues with that too. Maybe the model you are using is based off pieces that, that look different. So the way, yeah, so we could, retrain a model to specifically detect for these types of positions. Now this is the re repo. I'm going to put it in chat for everyone. This is the repo that we used for, um, for using this detection. Obviously we want to like improve on this and make it better. The way they created their images was through, um, through a what? Through uh, a Blender like 3D rendering software, which I believe created like a bunch of different uh, data sets. 
Speaking of which, I, yeah, I'll download that later. Um, but they all aren't necessarily these chessboard versions, but we could, I think like focusing this to like the scholastic set, these types of sets might be the best way to start and seeing if we can get an improved version of this. But before we do that, we need a score. So I saw someone said hamming distance. The architect, can you explain more on hamming distance, how we would label it? Because the way I was thinking of, like the easiest way uh, would just be like, uh, it's either a true positive, like basically for each square, it's either a true positive, a false positive, you know, all that stuff. So let's, let's, let's say this is the ground truth board. And let's um, recreate this board. Maybe before we do this, we could try to improve this a little bit. If you're doing from video, you know the starting position of pieces, so you can filter output lo logits and valid moves from previous state. Is that the plan? That's part of the idea, yeah, yeah the architect. Um, but I think the way we would score it is throughout the game. So the there's two different things going on. We have like the how well or what sort of architecture do we think could improve upon this classification? But before we get ahead of ourselves, probably the most important part of any good data science machine learning um, project is defining our metric. How do we define what is good? What is a good classification? What is bad? Because this is not this is not good to have a queen be mislabeled or a king being mislabeled as a queen and a queen mislabeled as a knight. We know this is not good. This is not ideal. Um, but what if like this queen was correctly a king, but this, this knight was wrong or something else was wrong? Like how do we determine what's better than the other ones? Create 60, a 64 character long string with a letter for each piece. Take the FEN and then compute the hamming distance, a very simple metric. So you're thinking in terms of strings. Yeah. So I was thinking precision. Yeah. So Grump said precision and recall, recall on pieces. Um, I was thinking like precision recall on, on uh, squares. But maybe adding some weight to squares that contain pieces in the ground truth. I don't know, I'm spitballing here, but this is what I'm thinking. So we now have two different types of boards. We have this board, which is the predicted. We have the ground truth board, which is what we know the setup is. And then we need to actually get the pieces in each position so piece map what is that all right so this is our piece map in the ground truth board we have each uh, dictionary with each of the 64 squares and what piece is on each of them does it have the color of the piece oh that's correct that's right so lowercase uh uppercase r for this rook is on um position two hey welcome to the family ryan hope glad to have you here we're just trying to do a computer vision project to detect the positions of pieces and we're trying to make a metric so i think this is the way to do it Let's just do it really crude. Hey Ryan, how'd you find the channel? And I like your username, Python. We are coding in Python, so. Um, so this is gonna be very crude metric. So for uh, square in range 64, does this, is this start at zero? It's saying there's a rook in position 
two. So I'm assuming that bottom left A1 square is zero and it goes, this is gonna go up to uh, 63, not 64. So that sort of makes sense because we have a, a black king on G8, which would be position 64. Is everyone following me here? Browse programming, found yours about chess. Nice. I did an open CV chess AI project before, I, so I visited. Oh, Ryan, Python. What? Link me to your um. Link me to your page or what? Your, whatever code you wrote for it. I'd be interested to see. Think positives, i.e., piece on a square which doesn't have a piece in the ground truth, should be punished more than a missing piece. Maybe. Maybe we'll keep it vanilla here at the first and we'll just do true positives, true negatives, right? So let's create the ground truth piece map and pred piece map. And that's gonna be the board piece map. Um, I guess we could also just do piece at, piece type at, so if we do one, um, let's test this out. So this gives us a number, a number representation. Doesn't it do camera stuff though? Just template matching on Lee Chess? What do you mean? This page on video demonstrates it. Oh, nice. Let's see what you did. Chimp test bot. What is this? A bot that plays against opponents in on Lee Chess. It uses OpenCV from template matches, a chess library to figure out the best move and Pi Auto GUI to play the move. Oh, that's cool. So it's like... Architect, you don't spam the chat too much. I love chat being involved here. Uh, because if you know the previous position. But this is, so this is Ryan Python who's in chat right now, his project. And so if I'm understanding this correctly, your chess bot um, is basically automated, like a cheater for, for Lee Chess. Like you can cheat on Lee Chess by using this because it'll detect the board, it'll detect the position, it'll know the best move, and then it'll actually make the move. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I think I've had I've had that idea as a project before, but never executed on it. Most of my projects I haven't actually fully executed on, but all right, what should we do? GT board, we can do, maybe it's cleaner to do it this way. So remember, GT board is uh, ground truth. And then board is prediction. So piece, what's the difference between piece type at? Gets the piece type for a given swear. So that would be like four and then get piece at oh actually gives us a rook uh like it prints it but it's that uppercase r if we wanted to like both work but let's just do piece at because if we want to do any sort of special scoring for certain pieces uh we'll have to do it that way so i'm going to cut this Uh, so this is the ground truth. And this is the pred piece. And we're going to keep track of a few things. So we're going to keep track of true positives, false positives, and false negatives. Uh, let's say true negatives. I 
Uh, it's a little weird here because what's like a... Really cool polish. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, I, exactly, Ryan. Ryan has a great project there. Um, so how are we going to grade this? All right, maybe we need to make this simpler. Can we just do GT board get, uh, oh, wait, piece map. And then we can make this into a data frame. I love my pandas. Import pandas as PD. We should put that at the top. PD data frame on this. Um, if using all scalers, you must pass an index. I think this is like this. And transpose this. This is one way to do it. So the index is the position and this is going to be, we're going to make it, we could also do the, this data frame from dictionary. It's still going to make us do the, oh, I think I need to change the orientation. Orient is not from columns. Other, otherwise pass index. Oh, so this piece map has piece and the color. So this color is actually like white or black, I think. I need a map of this to the, the square names. Could you just convert the boards to 3D arrays into cat cross entropy? Is there in like an array? I know if I print it, like the string representation of this. Was it like this? This looks like this. And then if I import NumPy as NP, can I make this into an array? Not really. This is like a hacky way of doing it. And split on the space. Let's strip out the slash ends. I don't know what I'm doing. Are you using the Python chess library? I am. You could one hot the string. Please wait a moment. You will get it. Okay. Um, you mean, so do you think I should keep on doing it this way? Cause I, I still feel like it's, it works well to do it this way. I just don't like that the piece map gives us the color and the piece type. So let's just, okay, let's continue down this road just to make sure that um, I know I know how to do it this so. So let's do ground truth data frame is this. And then the board piece map is gonna be pred data frame. And then we're gonna merge these together with the suffixes of um, 
ground truth and prediction. Uh, left, left index equals true, right index equals true. All right, so now we have the predicted piece and we have the ground truth piece for each of these and we can see which ones are correct or not. Um, we kind of need to join up the color with this, right? I feel like this is, I could do all that regex stuff. Uh, Wolf, I agree, but doesn't this work? Now, one other thing I need to do is make a data frame with the index is a uh, range from of 64, right? Bear with me, I know this is all kind of messy. So this is like our skeleton and let's actually load extension lab black. Oh, I need to do it like this. Oh, it says black is an install pip install black. Let's so make our code a little bit cleaner. Make it look a little cleaner. And I'm also gonna do these imports. Pandas as PD, import numpy as NP. I'm sure we'll need those at some point. Let's just restart this from scratch. Make sure we're getting everything right. Um, probably should have imported. That, okay, there we go. This is gonna clean up our stuff a little bit because don't need this anymore. This will take our skeleton and we're gonna merge it on this. Left index is true. Right index is true. And then how is gonna be outer here. I guess we don't really need this. Uh, oh, this, this merge also needs to be an outer merge, right? Because if we have a piece that does not exist on one or the other, that's, that's no bueno. Uh, let's fill an A with uh, just blank. And do you guys see what I'm doing? You could do data frame coordinates, index apply, lambda, NP unravel index, eight by eight. Uh, so that's to reshape it in eight by eight. Can we join them on making false ones negative integers? Please wait for a moment. You will get it. Okay. So let's stop and wait for a moment. What's our approach going to be here? Data frame approach, which I always prefer, or doing a, doing like a matrix difference. Let's do this. What I think here, just to, Let's see if there is, is zero a piece number? Maybe I should fill this NA with zeros. Cause I really want to just join this with the color. I'm doing a matrix difference approach now, if that helps you decide. Yeah. Um, let's see this DF core deck 
coordinates df apply. Let's see this. Oh, this is the way of, um, what does this actually do? It's not letting me apply this unravel index on an integer index. Akash has a data frame question. I'll try to answer it. Look how much I'm failing here. Um, I know this is messy, but this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. Ask your question. Hey, by the way, if you're watching this and you don't know about my YouTube channel, exclamation point, YouTube will in uh, Twitch will bring you to it. It's right here. I released a new video last week. I've been doing, I'm streaming this live. Um, talking about newbie mistakes that pandas users do. So check that out if you haven't already. Um, this should first be an int. That's gonna be our ground truth. And then I can do the same thing with our prediction. Because the because the actual prediction is a combination of the color of the piece and the um, and the piece itself. Hey, welcome to the family, someone. Uh, let's see who joined. Who joined? Welcome to the family. Uh, API Tim and N. Welcome. How, hope you're doing well tonight. Um, hey, Chris, we got Chris uh, chatting in the YouTube channel. Your new Pandas Mistakes video helped me. Just started in da data analytics this year after a few years of engineering in your channel. Really useful. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. Tell all your friends. Post it on social media. I'm learning like all of you, as you can tell, but I'm just trying to share what I've learned. Um, be, and honestly, it's kind of selfish because I just want to learn how to be a better communicator. And I appreciate all the feedback. Let's call this the prediction board. So now this is a function that's really messy, but it works. Like this is how, unfortunately, how my brain works sometimes is we'll give it the ground truth board. We'll give it our prediction board. And now we have a data frame that has like the ground truth and a prediction. Like we could just do this too. We can clean up later so that it actually shows the, um, Right. Um, okay. So we got some nice stuff. Do I, okay. I have a data frame with the latitude and longitude columns, and I have a list of specific latitude logic columns. I want to filter out the list is really long. I want to type them manually. The Latin log to our multi index format. Do I, do I filter out the most efficient way? Hmm. As with most things with pandas, there's like infinite number of ways you could do things. I do things that maybe aren't the best. So you could like reset the index. So you have a latitude and longitude column. And then query based on that, like then have like you could concatenate them together into a string and then have a list of strings that you filter out on. The problem is that you have it in your index and filtering on the index can be a little bit tricky, especially with multi indexes. So is there, is there any reason why not to do a reset index, make them as columns 
and then do your filtering there. And then what do you have a list of specific latitude longitude points you want to ignore? Or is it just, is it something like within a certain distance? Because if you're doing that, you might want to look up like GeoPandas actually does this stuff really well. I've used before. So GeoPandas uh, like is meant for working with latitude and longitude data. There's also like uh, Spacey or something else. No, not Spacey. Another uh, package that uses uh, distances that you can calculate and stuff like that. It's meant for um, locational data. So I'm sorry, that's my suggestion. I don't know if it's great. It's, uh, hey, welcome to the fam, Mike. Thank you for joining us. Spacey is NLP though. Yeah, not Spacey. I'm, I'm being Spacey here by saying Spacey. Um, there's something, there's another library that can like in pandas ish way calculate distance from things. Uh, pi geo pi geosity. Oh, that might be it. No, it, I didn't, I pasted the wrong thing. Pi geodesy. Oh, is this a good one? Yeah. Send this package to all your flat earther friends, people, so that they know that like calculating <laughs> distances and stuff, it, it doesn't work if you don't account for the curvature of work, the earth. All right, so we created this joint data frame. And then if our predictions equals are the ground truth, Oops, I didn't mean to do it that way, right? So now we have a bunch of trues and falses. Um, see, what is a false positive in this? Is a false positive, do we wanna penalize saying a piece exists somewhere that's incorrect probably probably want to consider that a false positive um so this would be like a, a true positive it it predicted it and it predicted it correctly that's when the prediction equals the ground truth if the ground truth equals this zero, zero, zero. And the prediction does not equal the zero, zero. Tell me if I'm doing this in the, like a inefficient way, which I'm sure it's not. Then this is going to be, I guess we would call a false positive. Oh no, a false negative. Because this means, no, this means the ground truth is nothing and the prediction is not nothing. False negative, that's correct, I think. We'll go back to that. Then we're gonna need a false positive. That's when the prediction does not equal this and the ground truth does not equal the prediction. Hey, I suggested making the values negative if the color is black makes False negative, false, much easier.
And then I would just make it zero if it's... Okay, so that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Um, so this basically, what you're saying is basically take the ground truth, uh, sorry, let's take this and return the full data frame. That's a really good idea. Let's, let's do your idea. So we have a uh, color ground truth. If that is true, What is it going to do if it's NA? If it's true, then let's locate wherever it's true. And then we'll make the piece type ground truth. How, how would we invert the multiplied by negative one? Does that work? Maybe you don't need to have both naming in the cases one, two, three. If NA do nothing since it's zero. Yeah, so now we have what we are, have here in, is piece type ground truth. Yeah, this is a better way to do it. Let's see how this works. Piece type ground truth is gonna be, it's gonna be negative if the color is true. I don't know if we wanna make it, if it, the color is false. Then it'll be negative or I don't, it doesn't really matter. Piece type um, prediction is gonna be the same. And then we're gonna return, then we wouldn't need any of this crap, right? And we can return this data frame, which is piece type ground truth and piece type prediction. How's that look to you guys? Right? Um, let's make them all as integers. So now we have negative if they're the right color. I feel like the names true negative, true positive are not making a lot of sense and just causing confusion. Um, true. Yeah, I guess we don't need to actually calculate F1 score or anything. We could just do like a... Okay. All right. You guys are keeping me in line. So we're going to do... We're just going to import from sklearn metrics. Let's look up sklearn metrics. Um... Thing is, I'd like to have like a confusion matrix, multi-label ranking metrics. No, classification met metrics. That's if we have like probabilities. But what if we try this classification report? How did I get way up here? So classification report, um, piece type ground truth is gonna be our truth. And then piece type prediction is gonna be here. And it hates me. This is gonna give us everything. So this is like the precision recall 
of each of the piece types. So what's negative one? Is that the... So our, uh, this is cool. cool. So our average F1 score is 0.84. I kind of feel like the name's true negative. Black Pawn is negative one. Hey, Unbandit, welcome to the family and to the channel. Glad you're part of it. Let me know in chat how you found the channel. That'd be great. This is cool though. We have like, we have some idea of what we would want. Now, I kind of feel like I want to wait. I want to wait differently. Um, so if I did, if I import here F1 score, If we just did straight up F1 score on this, is it going to give us 0.84? It does not like this. Okay, so we have to do an average. We have to average because it's not a binary classification. So we need to decide between micro and macro F1. Macro, I think we want micro. So each square is kind of given its own weight, but what we do want to add here is in a weight. Sample weight. All right, so if our piece type ground truth equals zero, uh, doesn't equal zero. This is gonna be as type int. So it's gonna be a zero or a one. Um, a zero if it's, I guess I could also clip this. No, I can't because it's, I could absolute and clip it. Absolute of piece type ground truth and clip between zero and one. Same thing, same result. Hey, just stumbled upon you on Twitch and love how you use Python, so I stayed. Nice, thanks for joining the family. That's what we call it when you, uh, when you follow here. You're joining the family. Also check out exclamation point YouTube and, and give me a subs on there. I'm trying to hit 10,000 subs. Can we do it? Can we get to 10,000 subs on YouTube? Not tonight, maybe eventually. Um, all right, so I think we have some sort of a metric. Now the thing that I'm talking through here is, is uh, adding this weight. So it, if it's clipped like this, we can add one. And then Multiply by two or something. Oh, then we need to do it this way. This is just like a clue, like sample weight. We're just trying to make it so that the empty squares are weighed less than, less than an, uh, a square that has a piece. Does that make sense? Ooh, I do. You can farm the Hans Neiman cheating controversy. I I agree. If I was good enough to do that, hey Robert E. By the way, welcome back. It's been a while since I've seen you. I hope you're doing well. Um, that would be fun, but I feel like that ship has sailed. Like the content came comes out so fast that you have to be on top of these things. Um, yeah. So delete all this crude metric stuff. But now what we have is an F1 score which I think the micro um, is the same thing as an accuracy score. So let's do an accuracy score for this. And our classification report is pretty nifty. Um, 
we just did an accuracy score without any sample weight. Oh, I need a, yeah, it's the same thing. And I learned this in our last competition that I launched because I forgot that with micro accuracy F1 score, um, it's basically accuracy score unless you have the potential for false negatives. Like if everything's gonna be labeled, then uh, we're basically doing an accuracy score with uh, the sample weight of our weight here, which is just kind of like a dumb way of doing it. So let's say this is our scoring. So let's say, let's get our, our score from by doing this, providing a ground truth board in our prediction. And we're gonna return our score like that. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Uh, move these up here. We don't really need the F1 score in here anymore. Then, what are we doing? Deleting all this because of the great suggestion someone had to make the um, black pieces considered negative, or maybe it's the white pieces. One, well, one of the colors is opposite. And then we'll, in, in this function, get the create the joint predictions and get our score. So if we do get score on our ground truth board in our board, we get this result, cool. Uh, confusion matrix, Grump, you suggest, we could check that out. Oh, you guys are saying some other stuff. Have done some mean squared error loss version if interested, fairly basic. Wait, so how would mean square error work on a classification? So you one hot the board and then you do mean squared error loss. This is cool. One hot board does this 13 by eight by eight. They're 13 pieces, okay. But, but what about the colors? Is it still 13? Am I crazy? Um, so anyways, you're doing this, you're making your board. How did you pull out the, I love by the way, that you could just hand me this collab stuff. Uh, let's add it here. The thing about, Ooh, not loose. The thing about scoring like this is like, there's no limit to how many metrics we can use. Why not try some more? I like this code though. So you did the pieces like, and you already have these pieces written out. That's nice. And of course I'm losing everything. This is what collaboration looks like people. Collab. So in theory, I should be able to run this and then run this on my board, ground truth board, my board. Oh, I don't want to do this. What did you do? What did you do? You one hot encoded them first. Yeah, that's right. Um, and then I'll return these two encoded.
1.38, is that sound about right? Uh, six white pieces, six black pieces, one empty. You're right. I'm dumb. I have a question. Hey, Dararonos, welcome to the family. So glad to have you here. We're making a chessboard computer vision stuff. Hello, Quaza. What's up? Uh, hi, I'm Kyle. Said, I have a question. What are you using the metrics for? Since our case, even 99% is never sufficient. Well, because, I mean, we want, so let's say that Let's say that we have a really good model that is 100% most of the time. When it does fail, we want to at least know how much it failed by. How are Rob? I like the way that you format, formulated that question. How are Rob? I'm feeling pretty chill tonight. We, cause we got, I started kind of late and now I'm going kind of late. Um, but it's a lot of work. We made a lot of progress and I basically found a library that does what we're trying to do, but isn't perfect and leaves room for improvement, but still is pretty awesome. All right. So, and, and like I said, the biggest thing that we have to do is create this metric so that we can actually score how well it does. Um, I like this. Uh, we can do both metrics. I like this get score. Uh, so if we could see if things are perfect or not. So I wish there was a way for me to like set up a board. I guess I couldn't go to chess.com. I can go to analysis board. analysis and I can set up a position here and then I could download the FEN it's kind of annoying to do all these steps set up position and then I can um, set up my board and then check it that way Uh, does the library give you the same result if you run it twice? So that's what we're getting to. So this might be a good thing to end on since is it getting late for me is to let's set up the board in a few different states and then see how well it predicts. So uh, right now we're doing it this way. I wish I could print this board a little bit easier. So I'm gonna release this. Ah, it doesn't wanna pull from that. Is that because I have the camera open? Nope, let's restart this just to be sure. Cause now we can print our image or print our board and print our score and just run it a few times. Cause it's kind of hard to check each thing, right? Every time we do it. And now that we have a scoring metric, it's gonna be a lot easier. So this is our ground truth board. Um, make this bigger for you all. Print ground truth board. Need to release this. And this hates me. It doesn't like my webcam right now. The secondary webcam. I don't know if it's because the OBS is up open. All right, so that's the board. We should, we should print some like, 
prediction. And then print a space maybe. Print ground truth. Perfect match for my MSC version would be output of zero. Worst case is 4.92. That's, so you could rescale it, okay. That's probably a good idea to rescale. Why is it hating on my convert to color? All right, there we go. Um, these are the two predictions and then we're gonna get our metric. So let's put our metric up higher. This is our scoring metric score code. And this is the get the score code we'll put up here. We will also put in our friend here, the architect's score. And we will print, so get score of our GT board and our other board. And we'll also get our MSE, MSE loss. Yeah, this might, MSE board. And then I need to print these. Accuracy score, and then we'll get this like four decimal places, about right. Maybe we print this before we actually plot the image and do all this other stuff. Like put this up higher. Um, and then we will do our MSC score like this. Should I do the dividing here? Like the divide by f 984, oh, 984? MSE score is 1.14. So that's like, yeah. Can I zoom in a bit more? Absolutely. Um, so this is no longer that pretty representation of the board, but this is telling us our score is 0.79. This, granted, this is weighted. Did I weight our accuracy score? Get score. So we can make the weight none to start with. And then we could actually score it at different weighting scales, but it's a 0.85 and then a 0.147. So it's like, those are very comparable, right? Uh, are we just computing the same thing? No, cause it's, uh, is it the same thing? Is this zoomed in by the way, enough for you guys? All right, so now we have our board set up, right? And I can like, what should I do to try to improve this? Can I can I actually move the pieces? I know you guys can't see it here, but I'm gonna try to like move this up a little bit more, maybe get some better lighting. Maybe that's up too far. And I'm gonna rerun it and we're gonna see if eight, five, nine, Hey, it's gotten a little bit better, eight, seven. See, now we can quickly see if it's better. Oh, but it's, it's actually cut off part of the board. So how did it do, do better? Bring the lamp, I love lamp. Anyone get that reference? Uh, 0.5, why is it so bad? Oh, cause I cut off the whole bottom. So the prediction has like none of this bottom. So I'm, I'm zoomed down a little bit more. See, so like 
we can quickly now see how well it's doing. That's why we're making this metric. And we have like a, we have a pretty uh, standard way of, of evaluating it. 0.82, what's it getting wrong here? Well, pieces are not necessarily correctly on their squares. Another thing would be like a heat map to show us where it went wrong. Can't, what's the perfect way I can get this? Is it getting this king? It's still thinking this king is a queen and this rook is a knight. Point eight nine five four. Let me try to let's take this image and crop it a little bit. First, let's get this situated so everything's in view. Like this. Rerun this. There, it's mostly in the view. And we'll do like 100 to 400. I guess we need more at the top, like 50. And then we can do 150 to, I guess that's gonna be enough. Not sure if you've tried other solution than chess cog. I think the ultimate goal is to like do it our own way. Oh, this is cool. Neural trust chessboard. Most of these angles are pretty high, but that's really impressive. We can now, we can now score them against each other. These animations are cool, but this is five years old. I can't imagine it being the best, right? The other one released a paper talking about if this is five years old, I'm doubting it's going to be better than the other one. But next stream, maybe. Oh, yeah, baby. All right, so let's crop this image. And see if it does any better. 8438. Eight. It's still, still doing poorly on these last pieces. Um, can I put something in the ground? I don't know. I don't have any paper or anything. Uh, let's do like, let's end on this note. Let's try to just set up the board in the standard format that you would set up a board and see how well it does. And then, uh, end the stream. Sound good? It was kind of a chill stream tonight, but I hope you guys had fun. I had a lot of fun. I learned a lot. I really think that we can we can find improvements on this. I think if this was a Kaggle competition and maybe there was a GPU involved, that we would see some interesting solutions. Uh, it might be better. The older one was trained on images of actual boards with varying piece shapes, etc., which is closer to your input. That's true. That's true. Yeah. This one was trained on, um, on synthetic images. Next stream, we will test that out. I don't, I don't trust myself 
to uh, to test it right now because then I could see myself being up for another four hours. All right, the board is set up into opening position. I haven't changed the FEN of this, so this scoring metric is going to be screwed up. 0.46. See, I think it should be a lot worse than 0.46 for what it is. Um, started watching my pandas videos a few days ago because I didn't know how to use a group by, and I've been loving your stuff. Decided to check out your stream, and it's been great. Thanks so much, the architect. I can't believe that you needed my videos to do better because um, you've been helping me out all night. So I love it. All right. So let's get the FEN position of a, like a base uh, standard board. That's going to be ah, reset. Uh, then we're going to download, share this FEN position. So this is our old... That's our, now our ground truth is this and it's, oh wait, I still have this queen down here. I think maybe adding object detection to this ooh, might help. Just doing object detection could be cool. So it's screwing up. It like can't handle the fact that these pawns have other pieces obscuring their view. I'm surprised that it does perfect. Wait, wait. Yeah, I'm surprised that it, oh, it thinks everything at the top is a knight. Um, so let's also just do this. Oh, that's the, that's the real problem. So we have big problems here. We have big problems here. It really likes them knights. Um, I feel like it's just the background being dark. Let's try one more thing. Okay, am I an idiot here? Is this a stupid idea, but I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take a paper towel and put it underneath the back of this board. That's not gonna work. That's not gonna go. Contrast is good, yeah. But like ideally we would want this to work without without this added contrast. Look at my paper towel, it's not helping. The lamp brightness might actually be hurting it. Here's a second lamp I'm gonna turn on. Um, and then I need something to, I need something to hold this up. My roller. All right, this is silly. This is just absolutely silly, but we're going to see if that improves things. Now we have like a white background behind the black pieces. And it's still pawns, knights, rooks. Thinks the king is a queen. Let's let's actually print this out. So it doesn't think they're all knights, but we should expect better, right? Better than this. Uh, still missing some of the pawns for the white pieces. I think you're right. Whoever suggested that other 
architecture, it's probably going to beat this though. At least in this example, because we don't have si simulated things. All right, cool. So. Bring this to here. Thanks to everyone who watched on YouTube today and uh, on Twitch. It was a lot of fun. We tried a bunch of stuff and it actually turned out better than I thought. The main thing was we figured out a metric that we can use to classify how well our model is doing. Now, I could have used a, a better quality camera too. And we could have just pulled in images that we had ordered pulled in from uh, game footage because we've written all the code to do that from that just scrapes YouTube videos and see how well it scores on that. Um, but we have a baseline here. We have a baseline here, which is a really nice art, um, uh, paper that was released on, on this topic. Thanks everyone for hanging out. Also, maybe they train on high res images as they use Blender, so it might be confused by a low res, true. Yeah, we could, we could, there's a couple different ways we could take this. We could use Blender to create more images, add in a little bit more augmentation. Um, the hard part about making our own real images is like take a lot of time to set it up. But I've thought of like we could try to do something smart with like put each um, piece in each position with like a green screen in the background and then do some sort of like auto creation. Um, there's a lot we could do. Or we could just make a Kaggle competition, see who does the best in, in finding the results. I'm voting for that one. And maybe have some prizes on the line. Okay, y'all, we are going to end the stream now. Um, maybe do a raid and then, um, yeah. It's a lot of coders on tonight. Uh, I know we laid, we, we raided uh, Nick last time and he's not coding right now. Chrissy codes. Feel like we gotta switch it up a little bit. Sci Force One, I also like rating, but Sci Force One is um wait, he's hosting me right now. What's going on? <laughs> uh it looked like he was doing React stuff. Now yeah, let's raid Chrissy. Oh, she just got raided. Man, I overthink this. Oh, Cyforce, you just raided? How did I not get the alert? I was about to raid. I was thinking about raiding you until I saw you were doing um, React. But I appreciate the raid, guys. We were, we were working on uh, chess board vision, computer vision stuff. So if you look right here, I'm looking and currently looking at who to raid. But uh, we, we're running this on a webcam that I've set up here and trying to detect the position of this chess board. And uh, the pre-built model is not doing too great. It's got a lot of queens down here <laughs> that it's predicting. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's uh, it's a, been interesting to try try and figure out. Yeah, no problem. But thank you for the raid. I appreciate it. I hope you guys check me out. Oh, by the way, before I leave, exclamation point YouTube brings you my YouTube channel. Uh, trying to get to ten thousand subs on there getting close and uh discord is our discord channel if you want to say what's up on there 
and then uh, exclamation point Kaggle is my Kaggle account. We may be releasing a new competition soon, so be on the lookout. We have nice prizes that we give away, like GPUs, so uh, check that out, and it, it should be fun. So uh, back to this. Back to the rating. I just have to make a decision. I like need a. I need like a spinner wheel that helps me to figure out who to raid. Because I'm so indecisive. Um, but let's go ahead and raid. Time enjoyed. So thanks. I've enjoyed my time with you all. I hope you have a great night. And uh, yeah, be kind to each other. Love you all. Let's start this raid. Moomy, thanks for hanging out.